everyone. So sorry for the background noise. I'm in my studio. Can't really do much about that. So tonight I thought it would be a really good opportunity to discuss job interviews and this for teaching art. Um, there's a lot that can go into art and I found when I'm trying to do research videos and topics and stuff like that not very many people talk about really what to look for or anything like that so I thought I shall take time out of my lovely day of doing nothing to be productive and to talk about some things on um, just what to expect overall and how to prepare. I came in really, really prepared. Now, this really did help me get the job and um, I was watching Michelle Rose's view on what, you know, her school was looking for in terms of, you know, hiring somebody and she made some great points and so I did take that little information to be prepared. I don't have a master's or even a bachelor's or associates, so I wanted to at least become a memorable person so that they could keep constantly thinking. So I created two books, so two portfolios technically. So if you know that in school I personally major in early childhood education at the moment and they teach us about teacher portfolios and how to set it up for a job interview. So I have my teacher portfolio. This teacher portfolio right here is everything that represents me to even um, the dividers. So of course I set up a resume. You can't really see it too well. And I love watercolor and artsy painty things. So I have my watercolor at my job resumes. I have um, I have my litter of recommendations in here. Just really, and what I did for that is I just looked up what should I have in a teacher portfolio. In this case, this is more for early childhood education. But I switched it up and um, used those same things, but applied it to more of an art education standpoint. And what I think is really important is, if, you know, besides the litter of recommendation, and here I have sample lesson plans where I cut out lesson plans. I made worksheets of all what I do for some people. If you're doing ECE, you apply that to early childhood education for me. I did. I switched it with my art stuff. So I have my primary secondary colors, learning how to differentiate which ones which, as well as worksheets like a Roy G. Biff worksheet. I've made color worksheets for teaching in the past. So I have like more of an elementary fun one as well as a school level one where I just took an example from either teacher paid teachers or whatever and I just printed it out. I have the documents so that they can do work on that. Also another thing that I put in was student samples. So I took pictures of students, what their work was, and that was actually really popular. Um, let me find some. This is a really good page right here. I was an art teacher for an academy for a little bit, um, just something simple. So I kind of laminated it. I have different things here that shows how the artwork was displayed, who I work with, their art, everything artsy for them. And that really gave them an insight to how I teach, who I teach, what kind of kids, age levels that they went through, how I set things up, how was the classroom management. And then I also created something different um, too, along with classroom management. I made a little document to show what my expectations were for my classroom and my classroom management skills, which a lot of people were really, like, the um, the interviewers were really surprised that I was this prepared. And I think that these tips are really going to help you be prepared and just be, as, be just as memorable. Just took a form. I talked about things like 
my calm down area because I personally have anxiety if you haven't seen my channel. I have a service dog for it, so yeah. <laughs> um, so about my calm down area, how I expect children to use it, how I'm going to teach to manage it, um, as well as classroom, clean, classroom cleaning. To me, that's extremely vitally important. I like to keep everything clean because I'm just naturally a messy person, so I have to overwork to clean. And in my head, a life skill is to be clean and organized. So for me, I'm going to allow my students to get the opportunity to organize themselves, set things up for themselves, which I'm a very, no, you're a student, you're independent. You know, I like to give independence. So knowing where to go and pick up your tools, the art, the art store is what I usually call it. Go and choose the tools that you need for the day. Yada, yada, yada. It's all set up, you know where everything is. This is a drawing card, this is a painting card, this is a crafty card, so you can add some fun new things to it. Well, that is your artistic creation. Um, also, cell phone policies. I, I, uh, yeah, I'm teaching, um, I'm gonna personally teach, uh, what I found out is I'm gonna teach transitional kindergarten all the way to high school, so cell phones are definitely being in that category. I wasn't sure what was gonna come into it, but just in case if you know you're going into elementary and stuff like that, just to add that because you never know what's gonna be expected, but you expect kids have phones, Apple Watches, they've got everything. So make sure you apply personal technology. I think that that's vitally important. And then also lectures. I want to have a lecture area with this and that, how I'm going to manage that. And that, you know, for what my needs and what I personally want to have, I made sure to prepare for it and to set up and to really make sure that they know I have a general idea of what I'm doing. Another thing that I really took into account is that um, in early childhood ed education, you see that they ask your organization and they want it super clean. They want to know your plans and they look up what should I include in a teacher portfolio. They talk about how you want to set up your classroom. That is so important and it's obviously the most fun and exciting thing for a teacher. So I have had kind, not necessarily a classroom, I've taught in a generalized room with art supplies, had to organize it a way to where it worked through everyone's needs, and so I didn't quite want to use that as a base because I have a generalized idea and I want to show them what I like. I like Reggie who inspired you take things, used things, and create it for a new enhanced thing. I just want Pinterest looked up um, how I want and then gave like a couple sentence summary you really don't want to talk very much because I don't want to read they're most likely just going to flip through and look through the picture examples because that's like, self-explanatory this one I kind of went a little bit lengthy because I wanted details of how I wanted to organize and keep it clean that's my personal agenda I like things aesthetically how I kind of want everything to look displays decor all that fun jazz so, that is one thing that I do think is a great idea. Now, you don't have to laminate like me. I just go on a lamination spree because I just can laminate her. And um, I like to keep this on hand. If, you know, I need another job, I want to be prepared for that. And then also you can add to it. You know, within each tab, you can add examples of how your room ended up turning out from your Pinterest board. And that's still super fun and super cool um let's see what else i added but yeah they they really did enjoy the pictures and visual especially of me teaching with students how my like all my students work it was really and it was really a great thing because for them to look at they've been there all day they've been interviewing for a long time and you know when you think of it in the perspective of going into a job interview what they are looking for that is definitely what they want to see they want something different from everybody else from just answering questions and making sure that you have everything in order they want to see how prepared you are what your um ooh, sorry um what you're what you want to do and when i presented both my portfolios 
I think it's at the end, very end. Well, like, do you have any questions? No, but I do want to show you these things because I spent a long time doing this and preparing. My second thing that I did as an art teacher, I think it's super important to show your work and your abilities besides in the classroom. Personally for me, if you don't have the talent, if you don't have the ability to draw or paint a specific way, you know, it's no different from going into an art gallery or putting in a portfolio for an art school. You want to be able to show your work, showcase what you can do. So, I had another binder here. I just added this, but I thought it was cute. I made a little marker illustration of my little fox. Um, and I just opened it up. I labeled all my artwork. It's on my Instagram. So all what I found is the best artwork. I labeled them as you can see. I kind of explained what I painted if you couldn't tell what it was. Um, so like I said, deer painting acrylic and how, what medium I used. And I had them look through my work because like I said before earlier in this video, I don't have an associate's degree. I don't have really, I don't even have an associate. So I knew that there was going to be people coming to this interview and saying, you know, I have my master's degree in art education. I have this, I have that, things that I might not have. So I felt, you know, it really definitely is important to show what you can do. And it definitely did get me the job to be prepared in that sense. And yes, I spent a really long time preparing, like, I, uh, probably a few weeks in advance. So I really took that time to dive in, get everything pulled together because I really personally wanted this job. I wanted to, I wanted to make an impression. And so that was really important. So my next thing that I do want to talk about with teacher portfolios and besides from this, you know, within the actual interview itself, I'm a nervous wreck. I've got anxiety for days and I was really nervous, um, especially when time is clicking, you're supposed to have your interview at noon and it's 12.30, gets to your head. So I go in and, you know, I definitely looked at those short art teacher clip videos of interviews with the ask, like obviously they're going to talk about your philosophy, your teacher statement, your, you know, why do you want to teach? How do you think of students? And you know, it's really hard. It's really complicated. And um, I don't process things sometimes. So it was really nice that they gave me an extra copy. The questions they were asking, personally for me and my interview, they were taking notes, noting what I said, how, um, I don't know. But all I know is they took notes. And they did talk about those questions. So I'm glad I did research ahead of time so I didn't have to stammer for words. I wanted to be prepared. I wanted to be clean clear and that's one tip I definitely think is very important be prepared because being prepared gives you so many opportunities to show the kind of person you are your personality without having to stammer around and give blank stares and not know how to answer something I hate that I love being prepared so I think it definitely helps me a lot within my teaching career so going into um, answering questions, we definitely talked about the obvious, like I said earlier, your philosophy. What's your philosophy? What um, what do you think is important for a staff member quality to have? And things like that. And if you have a personal point, if you have something you're really passionate about, definitely do talk about those things because they really want to get to know you to see if you are a good fit for the staff that are already there along with who, you know, to see if you, you just fit with everyone and that everyone can be cohesive because people just generally, you, there's going to be someone you never get along with, but overall they want somebody that everyone is good to get along with. So that is really important to just show your personality. Don't be afraid if you're bubbly, if you're excited, be that person for yourself because that's probably what they're looking for. They're looking for the best you because the best you is going to be the best you to be teaching the students how to be 
a great student and do the best that they can be. And I think that's super important. Very important. Also, don't be afraid to ask questions. They will ask you any questions. And if you want to know, like, hey, how much would I get paid hourly? Because that is important. You need to support yourself. Or what happens with this or this and this. And if you have any other questions, don't be afraid to ask questions. They're there to, you know, help you understand the knowledge of the school. And for me, working, going to be working at a charter school, charter schools have different needs from normal public education things. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so it is really important to really get to understand the school and to talk about it. And to be honest, don't try to pull out something you don't know. If you don't know something, you can say, I'm so sorry, like I apologize. I have no idea what that is. However, could you explain it? I'm more than willing to learn more about this. I want to give the best answers I can possibly give. So explain it to you. Whatever happens, happens. And you know, just, just be honest. I think that's the most important thing this whole video because if you're not honest everyone's kind of gonna you might get put in a position you don't really want so you know that's kind of the whole gist of it I think I brought up any points if you if any of you have any ideas or any other tips just comment down below help each other out because that's what I want this platform to be, is I want it to be help either to college students, to first year teachers, art teachers, service style users, anybody really. Like, I, I want to be able to help him, um, help give a platform to people who definitely do need stuff like this because, you know, sometimes there's not enough out there and my whole thing is we help each other not hurt each other so yes that is it i apologize that my door is wide open my service dog decided to rest on the opening to where i can close it she's picky she likes to play guard dog i just let her do her thing they're watching tv he's doing his own thing in the room so this is just a have the thing you know I just kind of make do with any situation sometimes you have to I apologize for this not finished atrocious thing behind me I didn't want you guys to see my mess on that side so I just shoved it show my progress beautiful isn't it it's not me it's my cousin verification anyways <laughs> I hope that does help and this doesn't just go for teacher interviews it definitely goes with anything artistic preparedness any interview just be prepared i hope i have been an amazing help to you all don't know how many videos i'm going to do today i do definitely want to talk about a couple other things so this might be it this might not but be on the lookout for more videos i definitely do want to do a art another art speed paint i do want to do a couple other things i'm always rearranging my art room so you can see definitely more updates on that as well as teacher classroom pet prep i definitely want to go over first day things i have a lot to talk about so stay tuned and subscribe like help each other out that's all i gotta say thank you so much for watching and i shall talk to you later